I think the internet age of music is a is a good and bad thing. <clears throat> I mean, the obvious, the bad is that, you know, with illegal downloading, a lot of people think that they are, you know, ripping off the big corporations or musicians don't need their money or, you know, I mean, the list of excuses of justifications of why stealing is fine at one in one hand and then yet they go to their job and if somebody stole from them, you know, it would be a bad thing. But, uh, you know, um, I mean, that's, that's where the bad comes in. You know, uh, I feel like what they don't realize is that they're ripping off themselves because if a label has one million dollars to spend on bands, are they going to pick pop and country that they know are gonna sell more or are they gonna take, take a risk on some up and coming young experimental band that could be your next favorite band well of course they're gonna all the labels are gonna start migrating to like known products that are going to sell like known music therefore the creativity has come to its limitations I mean sure there's obviously things like Bandcamp and you know Pro Tools where some people can record at home but they don't have tour support you'll never see them touring they still got to keep their day jobs so in the long run Illegal downloading kills creativity, you know, and also it, it, even if it's a band that you like and you download their record, the fact of the matter is, sadly, major labels or labels, all labels, look at sales as to dictate whether they're going to keep you on the label or whether they're going to let you record with a better studio or a worse studio or a better producer or worse. So you're obviously also limiting the creativity of the band you know so i call i just say like look at it like votes if you like a band vote for them like your money is just clearly a vote to keep them around to keep the band touring um and stuff like that so that's the negative the positive is that about eight years ago we arrived in a small town called adelaide australia and we're from winter haven florida which has like 27,000 people and just a nothing of a town so here's these, you know, young punk kids, stupid, naive, landing in another country, never been out of the United States, into a, a town called Adelaide, Australia, walk upstairs to this venue, and it is sold out and packed, and everyone's singing every single word to our song. So, I mean, and, and we didn't have any records out in Australia. So the positive is that the internet allows us to be able to tour China and tour Australia and tour Brazil, places where our record has never actually been for sale and yet we're still able to like draw crowds and everybody's singing along. So I think that it's the world's best advertisers of a dying industry, you know, of an of a, of a industry that, it's, that is in the end killing itself. It's very cyclical. It's like a, an animal that eats itself to survive. The funny thing is the other day our, our guitarist, just tongue in cheek, just totally joking around, was basically saying like, because our album leaked, that's coming out like on Tuesday, uh, Lowborn, and it leaked and people are already like commenting and he's like, he said something to the effect of basically like, yeah. this is kind of awkward guys, like you're talking about our record and sharing the link to download our record, please stop, you know, like, and then people just went off on him like, are you kidding? I go to a real job. Uh, you know, all these excuses on why it was okay to download. And it was just like, man, that is so, so sad, like to me. Like, I mean, we're leaving the industry. So, I mean, like, you know, we're getting out, you know, we, this is the last year of Amberlynn. But it still, like, crushes me. Like, I don't care if we sell 10 copies on this label or 10 million on this. You know, we're still going to end the band. It doesn't really dictate our futures. But I feel so bad for, like, up and coming bands that are still going to, like, have to, you know, even though they're touring 200, 300 days a year, they're still gonna go have to go home and get day jobs. And their label's still gonna drop them, even though people love them. It's just, it's, it's so, I mean, it's sad to me. I, I think that, I don't know what's gonna change. I think either everybody in the world's gonna find Jesus or, or realistically, the record industry just has to change. There has to be a way to, to maybe not penalize, I don't wanna like sue somebody for downloading a record, but maybe it's like a new version of a CD or a digital where you just cannot share it. And it'll be sad, I mean, because the, the fact of the matter is like, I'm sure any of us have playlists and we like to, you know, take our CDs and put them on our computer and then put them on our phone and put them on, you know, I don't know what's gonna change. You know, maybe they lower the price to like $4 per, per like, you know, if you want on your laptop, it's $4. If you want on your phone, it's $4. If you want the physical, it's $4. See what I'm saying? Like, that would be awesome. So where it can't be shared, but this, it's so cheap 
that you know I would want it in more than one place. I, if I love the band, I'm buying the vinyl, and it's going to be on my phone, and I'll probably have it on a playlist on Spotify. Well, what if each one of those people ca- charged me four dollars? You know, that shoot. I think I just, I just did it. I just won the internet. I don't know what's going to change. You know, I really don't. But I just feel bad for 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 young bands up and coming. You know, we we had to fight it, but not to the nth degree that that you know startup bands now have to.